So, ladies and gentlemen, again, if we are looking into writing the equation, um, writing the equation of the, sorry, tangent line. Okay, if we're looking into writing the equation of the tangent line, we need to obviously identify, we have a point, and if you remember point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Well, we need to understand what the slope is, right? We have a point. We can say that's x1 and that's y1. So to write the equation of a line, we have a point, but we need to figure out what the slope is. Well, we've provided a slope for this function, which is uh, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, uh, divided, all divided by h. So therefore, by using this definition, I need to go ahead and evaluate. So I will have the limit as h approaches 0 of now again, we're taking in the f of x plus h. So therefore, this is going to be x plus h, right? Just like you would evaluate for anything else, x plus h cubed plus 2x, I'm sorry, plus 2 times x plus h. Do you guys see how I just inserted in the x plus h in for x? That's all I did was replace that. And actually, I'll even put that in brackets so you guys can see. So I did x, of, or x plus h, f of x plus h. And then you're going to minus. And again, you're going to want to make sure you put parentheses or brackets around this, because what most commonly students will do is they will just write in x cubed plus 2x. And if you don't put parentheses or brackets, then you're just subtracting an x cubed. We need to make sure we're subtracting all of f of x. Correct. Then this is all divided by h. So we need to determine the limit now as h goes to 0. And what we practiced last chapter is if we can't apply direct substitution, which in this case we cannot, we need to obviously look for algebraic ways to simplify the expression, right? Well, obviously, we have a lot of things we can simplify. This x plus h cubed, as we just talked about the binomial expansion, looking at Pascal's triangle, I'll move this over here. So the limit as h approaches 0. x plus h cubed is going to be x cubed plus x, sorry, plus 3 x squared h plus 3 x h squared plus h cubed. And again, I'm just using these values as its coefficients. I start with x cubed, because that's the first term. Start that going to the third power. And then I go into sending powers. My h, I start with h to the 0 and go to ascending powers. Quickly expanded. Plus 2x plus 2h minus x cubed minus 2x all over h. It's like a lot, right? But what is nice about this is we can now start seeing, now that I have everything expanded, Let's start looking at things that um, subtract, subtract out. Well, I have an x cubed and a minus x cubed. I have a positive 2x and a minus a 2x. 3xh, those aren't like terms. Those aren't like terms, but like terms. So therefore, I can now rewrite this as the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed plus 2h all over h. All right, make sure I'm not missing anything. Now, again, we're, we still can't evaluate this. We need to somehow get this h out of there, right? Well, we can always do that. Think of the division property. Whenever you have a value divided by um, itself, that equals 1. Well, even though this h is you know, actually, you can see this h is divisible into all of these. So the easiest way to kind of show this would just be to rewrite the limit as h approaches 0 and factor out the h in the numerator. So therefore, by factoring out the h, I'm left with 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared plus 2 divided by h. So do you guys see how I just factored out the h in the numerator? Now, the h's divide out. 
and I am left with, um, let's write this in descending order, h squared plus 3xh plus 3x squared plus 2. And when we go ahead and evaluate this, oh, I'm sorry, as h goes to 0. Follow? No follow? So again, I divide out the h's. Now, you guys can see I don't have a denominator. So as long as I'm not talking when I'm talking, then I'm, then I'm fine to understand. Then now, I can apply direct substitution. So I plug the zeros in for the h. And you can see the only thing left over I'm going to have is 3x squared plus, 3x squared plus 2. Now again, yes? Yes, absolutely, I could have, and that's not the purpose of today's. That's the purpose of today's lesson, not the purpose of yes, last class period's lesson. We're reviewing last class period's lesson. Okay, so you guys can see that limit as h approaches zero is going to be three x squared plus two, and then now, ladies and gentlemen, um, we now have their slope, which is m equals three x squared plus two, and if we want to find the slope at our given point we um, basically can go ahead and figure out that x1, we can just plug that in. So is it OK if I erase? So therefore, to find our slope, m is going to equal 3 times 2 squared plus 2. So we have 4, 12. That means m is equal to 14. So the slope at our given point of 2 comma 12 is going to equal 14. Therefore, now I have enough information to write the equation of the line. y minus 12 equals 14 times x minus 2. And now I just need to, um, now I can just add the 12 over to the other side. And the equation of my line equals 14 times x minus 2 plus 12. Okay? Were you in ace math? Okay. So the important thing is 